Will and Matt, thank you both very much. Matt, I'm going to start with you. Obviously, the polls are looking good on the Democratic side here. What would you expect would be job one if the Democrats were able to not only take the White House, but the Senate as well? Well, the problem in coming in after Donald Trump is that job one is a very long list. Uh, but without question, job one is going to be to deal with COVID. It was the first question that Joe Biden got last night. Uh, he handled it, I thought, quite well. Um, and what we're seeing is what, what that- hey, hey, Matt, uh, what power does the federal Trump government Trump. have? What, what power, hold on, Matt, what power does the federal government have over a virus? Well, it has no power over a virus, but it has a lot of power to do things. You can use the Defense Production Act like what? to uh, make sure that we have what we need. You can um, uh, ask governors to issue governors, or as Biden put it, local officials to issue mask mandates. You can uh, make yeah, but that, sure but that's right, that Matt, 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 I'm sorry to push back, but Matt, 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 I'm sorry to push back. We're a Federalist Republic. I mean, this idea that, that the executive branch can control a virus. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not defending President Trump in any way. I'm just curious, 1968, 1957, 1918, we've had many other pandemics. Where has been a great, give me an example of a great reaction by a, by a president in a time of pandemic. By the way, the definition of pandemic means uncontrolled global spread of a disease. Sure, I'd be happy to. Ebola, where you had a very competent person, Ron Klain, put in charge of the federal response to Ebola, and we had exactly one person die in the United States because the government, we had a whole of government response. We had the CDC and the FDA and HHS and- Comparing uh, Ebola and to Department COVID. Security, all working together effectively to take on Ebola. I'm not saying it'll be easy, it'll be very hard. No country in the world has had an easy time with this, but we could do it much better than what we've seen with Trump, which has been chaos and denial and stupidity uh, pretty much down the line. I, I, fair enough, I just, I just don't understand what the, the, the White House, anyway, what, Will Weatherford here. Uh, so Matt says job one is gonna be a, a pandemic response. Listen, by the time that whoever inha inhabits the White House in January, whether it's Biden or, or Trump, again, we're going to, you know, we're going to have we're going to have the finish line in front of us on this pandemic. History says they last, you know, you know, 12 to 16 months in general. So the, the finish line is going to be upon us. What should be job one of the current or new president uh, on January 20th? Sure. Well, first, thanks for having me on. Look, there's going to have to be a stimulus bill. And ideally, it's going to be one that that deals with a lot of the issues that are facing our country. And you know, we live in a very partisan era, so Congress has been unable to come to an agreement probably between now and the election. But post-election, typically, regardless of which party that wins, that first 12 to 18 months is a very productive time, if we can call it that, in Congress. And so I think we'll see some real movement on that issue and probably several others like infrastructure and even potentially health care. You know, Will, I'll follow up with you here. Uh, you know, are, are, are the, is the GOP foolish to not get a, to agree to a stimulus plan because if they don't do something and we need it, if they don't do something, you know what's going to happen then? If the Democrats get in and sweep, if there's a blue wave, if you will, that stimulus could be five or six trillion dollars potentially and have a lot more stuff in it. What do you think the GOP's reticence is in getting something done here? And do you think it is, you know, to, to use Matt's word, stupid? I think it's an interesting point, Brian, and there's a lot of politics being played here. There's a lot of conservative Republicans that don't like the idea of any stimulus. And so, frankly, they're happy to see this get kicked down the road. And if the Democrats do take over in a clean sweep and they pass a $5 trillion stimulus bill, guess what? They're going to have to own it. And Republicans will then turn the guns on them and say, look how fiscally irresponsible they are. They passed a stimulus bill that was three times bigger than it needed to be. So I, I think there's politics being played here. The Republicans already passed a bill that was probably larger than they wanted it to be. They don't want to eat a second one. They'd rather blame the Democrats down the road. It kind of just goes back to the blame game. It shows the dysfunction of Congress, unfortunately, and where we are today in society. Yeah, all, all while, Matt, millions of Americans, primarily, and I've said it, we don't, we don't have a recession. We've got a travel, leisure, and hospitality depression. I mean, millions of Americans in hotels, restaurants, airlines, they, they may not go back to work for months, quarters, years, if ever, if their business upholds. What do you think should be the key parts of any stimulus plan that has passed? Well, first of all, I agree with Will. Stimulus is going to have to be big and it's going to have to come very quickly uh, because, as you point out, 
we're going to have 30 million people unemployed. We're going to have a homelessness crisis. People, there are going to be millions of families put on the street because they're unable to work because of this depression, as you put it. Uh, there's going to be a hunger crisis. So job one is going to be getting money into the hands of people who are desperately in need of it and who are unemployed for, for no reason other than uh, we're grappling with this horrible recession. Uh, the other thing that we're going to need to do is get stimulus money into the airline and other industries that are directly affected by the pandemic response. And then ultimately, we're going to need to start to respond in larger, more systemic ways with a big uh, infrastructure bill and, and other kinds of spending that can help get us out of the recession. But immediately, we're going to need to rescue the people who Congress right now is unable to get yeah. its act together to help. Matt, do you believe that I'm going to follow up with you and then go back to Will? Matt, do you believe that, that if we get, like the polls suggest, right now the polls are suggesting that Biden is likely going to be win and we could also have Democratic control of the Senate, the so-called sort of blue wave, if you will. If the polls are correct and we get that, would you believe that the administration will push for a much larger stimulus plan that may have things in it like Medicare for all, infrastructure, uh, paying off student loans, five or six trillion dollars. Is that a possibility? Something that would fundamentally reshape the way that we govern and spend? Well, no. Uh, first of all, Medicare for all is not a possibility. Joe Biden could not have been clearer about this for the last 18 months of this campaign. He has been saying he is opposed to Medicare for all. That is not happening. 100% not happening. Uh, but I do think a lot of the kind of deferred maintenance that we've uh, been putting off for years on our roads and bridges and ports, that kind of thing could get funded because we're going to need a big stimulus response to this recession. So uh, I do think there'll be spending, but it won't be the kind of apocalyptic spending that some of the Republicans are talking about. Yeah, Will, when we look at sort of how the markets may play out on this, whatever it is, is going to be probably, you know, $2 trillion to, to maybe $5 trillion, depending on certain outcomes here. How do you invest around it? Just keep buying stocks because it's going to be a huge boost to, to the economy with fiscal stimulus, which should, you know, unfortunately, probably just widen the inequality gap because it's going to send money to people that already have assets like stocks and bonds. Yeah, it, it appears the market is kind of buying into the polls and thinking that this is going to be a clean democratic sweep. And so if that happens, they're betting on this short term infusion, the stimulus package. I think the one thing that, that the market hasn't rectified with yet is that some of those tax cuts are going to get rolled back. Corporate tax cuts, personal income taxes, uh, those are going to be readdressed in a Biden administration, particularly one with the Democratic Senate. So there's some cross currents here. There'll be some short term stimulus. I think the markets will respond very favorably to that. But when you look out 18 to 24 months and you recognize that there's going to be more regulation and there's probably going to be higher taxes, there'll be a retrenchment. So it'll be very interesting to see how the market rectifies that and really the economy as a whole. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.